from PRX. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster who's, uh, I don't know, like I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I'm just here to keep you company and uh, put you to sleep. I don't have anything uh, funny or uh, amazing to say. I guess you could take that as a guarantee for what's coming up. Uh, but I'll be here. I'm, I'm here to keep you company. Uh, and if you're new and you're saying, well, shouldn't you just get to the point? And I say, okay, well, this is a welcoming part where I try to make you feel welcome. Because I'm glad you're here. But you're right. What do you say we get on with the show? And here's a couple of ways where we'll be, be, keep, 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 keep this podcast free for everybody as I misspeak. Uh, thanks. All right. Hey, everybody. Before we get to the sponsor stuff here, I just want to let you know that this show, Sleep With Me, and, and I'm glad so, so many of you are bringing this to my attention. It's, it's about you, the listener, and creating a safe place where you can feel seen, respected, and safe. Uh, and that's built on a, a, a foundation of compassion and empathy. Because I try to put myself and I say, well, geez, I wonder how that person's feeling. And I wonder what that experience is like. And when you're in that place, uh, it becomes really important to talk about stuff. Uh, and right now, that means uh, talking about the fact that support of the black members of our community is important because black lives matter. And when you hear me say those words, uh, know that that comes from a place, uh, the same place that kept this podcast going for seven years, a uh, place that's slowly growing, that it wasn't always uh, there inside me. And, and I'm learning every day. Uh, about it. Uh, yeah, but really it's like trying to grow that empathy and compassion so I can send it out to you across the deep dark night so I can be there for you. And supporting the members of our community is a part of that. Uh, also supporting your, so, oh, and if you want to get started on that journey, there's links to organizations in the show notes, or if you've been impacted, uh, there's links to organizations. And then if you're having a tough time right now, uh, you know, in the world, 2020, what, you know, there's links to organizations where you can get some extra help uh, and that can direct you to resources if you're in need. And that's because I care about you. That's why I make this show. Uh, so. Yeah, that's it. And uh, here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring this podcast for free. Hey, everybody, before we start, I wanted to tell you about another podcast you might enjoy. And one of the reasons I think you might enjoy it is because Sophia and I listen to this podcast at bedtime. And if you think Scoots's voice is nice, just wait. If you're not familiar with Phoebe's voice, it's, you're, you're, it's going to soothe your ears and bring them to another level. And the podcast is called Phoebe Reads a Mystery. It's from Radiotopia. And two of the nicest people on podcasting, Lauren and Phoebe. I don't know if, you, if you've ever listened to their other podcasts, Criminal or This Is Love, uh, but if you have, then you know that voice, uh, that sweet, sweet voice of Phoebe Judge. And you don't have to take my word for it. The New York Times calls her voice implacable and oddly soothing. And Phoebe reads a mystery. Phoebe simply reads a chapter of a classic mystery novel every single day. She's read books by Agatha Christie, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, and and Wilkie Collins. Oprah Magazine says her show is the sonic equivalent of a day at the spa. You'll feel soothed afterwards. So check out Phoebe Reads a Mystery on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening right now. Open up your, well, go ahead, I I'll wait. Go ahead, open up your device. That's Phoebe, P-H-O-E-B-E, -E, Reads a Mystery, and then click subscribe. Great. Uh, Phoebe Reads a Mystery. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone, the one brash part of the podcast. You could be a part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Just remember when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow morning, you go to get your juice, your coffee, whatever it is, say, wait a second, I should go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors and check out the sponsors like Helix Sleep, who's been supporting the show the whole year. And Michaela got the, the Helix Dawn, which I'm so, I, I had to read about it because I said, wow, finally getting some good sleep, uh, 
So if you're like Michaela, you support a sponsor, tag them, tag me in a social media post. That's really how you kind of raise your, uh, whatever, amplify your support and let them know about it. Or if you're not on social media or something, send them an email, give them a call so they know you value their support of the podcast, that you heard their message. And I can try, let me know about it. And I can try to thank you here on the Sleep Bay Supporter Zone like Michaela. Thank you, Michaela. That's the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of Sleepy Support is on a support in you, getting the support you need. If, you, if you're having a tough time right now, there's links to resources in the show notes to organizations uh, that connect you with help. So use those links. And then it, it, we're part of supporting change as well. And so if you're looking to change internally and externally, to be a part of the solution to support the black members of our community right now, because black lives matter, there's links to organizations to help set you on that journey right now or if you've been impacted to help you uh, uh, heal. The third part of Sleepy Supporters Zone is something I support. You know, I support Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and she supported American Friends of Hand in Hand. And Hand in Hand is an a organization that's building inclusion and equality uh, between Arab and Jewish citizens of Israel through a growing network of bilingual integrated schools. And this was something that was important to RBG, so it's important to me. It took warned me to, to spread the word in her honor. Uh, so links to Hand in Hand and American and friends of Hand in Hand will be in the show notes. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone, which is now over. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on the show. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny Scotty and Jennifer. Eric and the team. But it's down or on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud that we could dance We're raising money for the Water Wheel Foundation and Scooter might get a perm. Thanks, Mystery Bard. So they could commission a holiday song from you at songjonathanman.net. Uh, I'm at Dearest Scooter with a T on Twitter and Instagram. Dearest Scooter. Poor Dearest Scooter. Oh, boy, because of my mispronunciations. And remember, if you listen to, uh, you listen to a podcast app, that's the easiest way to get the show. You just uh, make sure you're subscribed. And then in your app settings, make sure smart speed or silence trimming is off and vocal boost is off and you're set at 1x speed because I've seen people bumping up the speed uh, and it's accident happens to all of us just get to know your podcast app a little bit better in the daytime and, and find those things or use YouTube and type in the name of your podcast app that way you can learn more about it because there's so many great apps out there uh, that's it what do you say we slow it down and uh, get on with the show uh, hey are you up all night tossing turning Mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's uh, thoughts you're thinking about, uh, thoughts, uh, feelings, uh, physical sensations. So things on your mind uh, from the past, present, or future, anything physically you're feeling or emotionally you're experiencing, or it could be many, many other things. Uh, Changes in time, temperature, work stuff, life stuff, Un- unknown uh, you say huh, that's I don't know I don't understand everything's like that's 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 the one that I don't know that one really gets me every time I say well, I thought I did everything right but whatever it is I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of stuff and what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Uh, uh, the, the, you say, what, do, what, do, what do you say? What are they called? Creaky, dulcet tones. Like a creaky... You know, like, here, well, here's nothing. Here's something else that hasn't been glorified on this podcast. Or what do they? What do you call it? What does Hollywood do? Glamorize it, right? Here's another thing that just doesn't get the credit it deserves. When it, like, actually, now that we're talking about it, there's a lot of different times this should get good credit. Uh, hopefully, I'll remember to come back to it. But creaky floors. Because I was just going to say, when you say creaky dulcet tones, what? How do you? Would you? Okay, creaky. Like a creaky floor, but dulcet. So it'd be like a creaky floor in your favorite on your favorite floor or your favorite room or your favorite place to be. Like you'd say, well, you know that spot where we'd get our favorite summer treat? Oh boy, I can just remember four steps into that old spot, I'd hear that creaking floor. And I'd feel that feeling because I was about to order my favorite summer treat. Treat not only nostalgia because I do it in the present day uh, too. So that would be more of a creaky. That's that's my new co- collection of collectibles. Creaky, mo- creaky, creaky dulcet moments uh, or creaky moment. Yeah, creaky dulcet moments. Uh, the creaky dulcet moment collection. Now not available or probably won't ever be. That, maybe that's what tonight's episode will be about, though. Yeah, let's do that. Creaky dulcet moments. Because that'll save me from having to figure it out right now. So, oh, oh, but anyway, so creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, which we just went on one, superfluous tangents. So if you're new, really what I'm trying to do is create a safe place where, where that I can send to you, where you could feel like you could come and visit or we could share, or just you could use it. It's really like I'm sending it to you. You do what you do. That's the nice thing is you could do whatever you wish with it. Uh, the This is an adaptable, safe place. And what I mean by that is, well, one form of adaptation is that this podcast does not work for everybody. So some people, they turn it off or they just say, well, this isn't going to, this isn't necessarily helping so, or you might be arriving for the first, second, or third time, doubtful, skeptical, or frowny, uh, or d- d- your expectations are not being met. And I want to say that that is a very legitimate reaction to this podcast, very normal. Uh, because like that's what most people feel when they turn this show on. You, of course you're skeptical. How many times have you been told something's going to help you fall asleep and it didn't necessarily help you fall asleep? Or doubtfully say this, your creaky dulcet tones and your pointless blathering. I'm just using a strong word for now to make an example. Well, you say your pointless blathering is supposed to put me to sleep or this nonsense. And I'd say maybe, we'll see. So if you're feeling that way, that's uh, that's normal. I want to point that out uh, because most listeners, 90-something percent of people that listen to the show say, it took two or three tries before I realized the show was for me. Uh, so just kind of see how it goes. The podcast is best consumed in a very loose way. So if you're waiting for it to start making sense or start putting you to sleep, uh, Kind of pay a little bit less attention or just, uh, and I don't mean it like uh, in an active way. Like you just kind of tune me out. You could, This is the one podcast you could multitask to. Ideally, you're multitasking by sleeping, but I'll get into how the intro works because most stuff, you know, you want to be in the moment. And this actually is kind of uh, to take your mind off of stuff for the, so the rest of you can be in the moment getting comfortable. Because I don't want to r- encourage you to multitask. I just don't want. I just want to encourage you to not to get, not to pay n- that you don't have to pay a lot of attention to me. So that's another thing. One, this podcast isn't for everybody. Uh, two, it's a podcast you really don't need to listen to. You can just kind of barely listen. And three, this is this is a bit of uh, out there too. This is a pod- sleep podcast that doesn't really put you to sleep. It keeps you company while you drift off. But I'm more here as your bedtime companion. 
uh, just talking, and I really am putting you to sleep. You're you're falling asleep and barely paying attention to me. And the other side of the, that is, if you can't sleep, I'm going to be here to the very end. Uh, like, I'm here to keep you company whether you're awake or asleep. So if you can't sleep, you know, there's listeners that can't sleep. There's listeners that listen during the day. There's listeners that are going through something and they can't sleep. There's listeners, You know, I'm here. I'm here. That's why the show's an hour. It's an hour, so you don't have to worry about when you're going to fall asleep, and you also don't have to worry if you can't sleep. You say, well, I got Scoots here for an hour. I got episode after episode after episode if I need it. So that's another part of it. Moving on to the next few things that can throw listeners off is uh, the, the way, the structure of the show. And this also goes back to the multitasking. Now, regular listeners, they know what I'm going to say. They just don't know the manner I'm going to say it because they change that every time. But this show is structurally very different. It starts off with a greeting, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. And that ideally is to make you feel welcome and seen and invited in. You say, hey, check this out. I got a, I got a place set aside for you. But here's the irony. You go ahead and pick it out. Like, there's a place here for you, but you go ahead and pick it out. Uh, see what works for you. So that's the greeting. Then there's business, probably like four or six minutes of business or something like that. That's how we're bringing the podcast to you twice a week is the people that take action on that. But that's more for regular listeners. If you're new, that's not important. Then... We move into an intro, which is about 12 to 20 minutes of me explaining what the podcast is. And that, those two things can really throw new listeners off because they say, what, like, because uh, I, I think most of the time they say, what are you getting to the point? Are you just talking about the podcast or is it all business? And I say, well, it's the business of going off topic. Uh, yeah, the intro. The bedtime story and the intro are kind of like they're, you could separate them, but I'll get into the method and that it is adaptable. You could start the show at 20 minutes or you could become a patron and listen to story only episodes. But for the most part, this is what works in some different style for most listeners is so the intro is like 18 to 20 minutes, we'll say. And it's me kind of introducing the podcast to the new listener. But for the regular listener, they get to multitask uh, while I'm doing the intro because it eases you into bedtime, lets the day drift away. So for a regular listener, and you could discover what works for you and you could keep changing it up. Some people are listening as they're getting ready for bed. Uh, some people are getting, doing it as they're getting comfortable and they're, uh, like, you know, getting settled in and, uh, like some people are knitting or drawing or petting their pets or combing, you know, brushing their hair, maybe giving them, maybe they're getting massage, giving massage, foam rolling, maybe you're making your bed or, you know, like, I mean, this is something that, and sometimes I don't pause to do this, but when I re I do a pillow reset, no, no, that's another one that's never come up on this. This is why I do these intros because this stuff doesn't come up. I mean, this I don't, that I remember, I don't ever remember glorifying creaky floors before, which I'll do hopefully in this episode. And I also don't remember talking about pillow reset, which is a really important thing in my life. That so many times I'm in such a hurry to get into bed and toss and turn, I don't pause and do a pillow reset, uh, which is one, getting my pillows back in my pillowcases, because whatever I'm doing to my pillows at night, other, you know, practice kissing and other things, you know, maybe when I'm asleep, I don't know, not when I'm awake. Uh, but they get, get out of their pillowcases and... Uh, also, you know, they kind of get depoofed, and also I have two pairs of pillows that I have paired up, uh, which I have talked about before. Mostly I get them in their pillowcases, but I have two softer pillows uh, that are, um, they could go under my head. Now, this is, I know these aren't for everybody, but I have, so I have two uh, feather pillows 
And then I have two non-feather pillows that are a little bit firmer that I either will grip into my arm or put under my legs or put over my head, depending on my mood. And I like and I like my pillow temperatures. Like I like to be able to switch up between the two pairs. So I have like a one feather pillow, one firmer pillow, one feather pillow, one firmer pillow. And that way, you know, I got my options. Uh, so, but I what I fail to do a lot of times is just, I just get in bed instead of doing a pillow reset. Uh, and, you know, making it nice. I say, okay, I'm gonna get my pillows lined up here before I get in bed. Get those pillowcases on. And I don't know why it seems so. I mean, I, if you listen to this podcast, you re, you probably could relate to this. Why then, if I do it before I get in bed, it's easy. But it, for some reason, I usually skip over it. But if I try to do it once I'm in bed, and even if the lights are on or out, uh, it seems like such a monumental task. I'm like, well, I just got to live with it now. This pillow's halfway outside its pillowcase. I can't. I can't possibly put them emotional wherewithal together to deal with this tonight and i might even that's when the brain bots start i might be like geez i wish i was the kind of person that really dialed it in before i got into bed but now it's just too late uh i'm stuck with this pillow that's sticking out and man is it, it, it isn't it i mean if you're listening to me it's funny but it's weird that it's true you're like uh just going to have to deal with this. I'm never going to get to sleep now that my pillow is like a one-eighth out of its pillowcase. And I can't possibly, I don't know what it is. Like, this is really what it's like for me. I say I can't possibly pause and sit up in bed and realign my pillows unless it's like so great. But I'll be doing it like it would be like, uh, I don't even know. Like, I, I would do it with such, uh, like, a vigor would be a, a strong like light version of the the kind of feelings I would be feeling if I actually did sit up and try to rearrange my pillows. It'd be like, I'd be so disappointed. I'd be like, I guess I just got to rearrange these pillows now. What a, what a, what an onerous thing to have to do. So yeah, maybe tonight, maybe, but while you're listening to the intro, you could do a pillow reset or maybe that's a reminder. You say, okay, that's great scoots. Cause I was just getting ready for bed. I was actually doing my slipper reset where I had my spring slippers, my summer split slippers, which I call splippers, uh, just to, uh, because, uh, I don't know, I like it. Uh, you say, cool, cool. Uh, so I forgot. Oh, that's why the intro so long to explain, to explain with it in a long way to the new listener. Why is the intro so long and pointless? Well, there you go. Uh, that's why, because I am who I am. So that's why the intro is so long, but it actually, so if you're multitasking, whether you're resetting your pillows or you, yeah, you're petting your pets, maybe you're bombing your elbows, maybe you're kissing your shoulders, uh, whatever it is, uh, you got time to ease into bedtime. So that's the intro. Then there's business between the intro and the episode. Uh, then tonight it'll be some sort of random episode about uh, Creaky Doll, uh, Creaky Dulcet. Oh, I did the Creaky Dulcet door collection by Dior, but this is Creaky Dulcet moments. Uh, I guess it would would have been at one of those stores that sells uh, things like that, like where you buy where you'd buy. Well, I wouldn't buy ornaments there because I'd say those ornaments are too expensive. Uh, but uh, you know, oh, collect not collectibles though. I don't know. You know, kind of know what I'm talking about. A, a store that sells stuff with moments. Uh, it, 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 yeah, a store with moments in the title. So that, that'll that be the episode. Then there's some thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show and kind of the things to know coming into it. If you're a regular listener, welcome back. You're glad to have you here. And then the other things to know is... Uh, I make this show because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a safe place. And if I can provide that for you, it's my honor. And the reason it's my honor is because I've been there. Clearly, you just heard, like, you just heard what I go through just with pillows. That's just a scratch on the surface. I mean, I don't even think I talked to my therapist about that. But, I mean, because probably my therapist know, like, would have said, well, I would have known that already. Thank you for informing me. But uh, 
uh, let's really talk, you know, let's actually talk about, like, are you sure you're not just filling time now? Did you prepare that, Andrew, before you came in tonight? Uh, just in case you didn't have it, you were not comfortable. And I say, you got me. You really know me well. The therapist, that's the therapist that lives within me. But I say, did you, pr did you practice that in the car on the drive over? Just in case you, like there was some dead air in here. And I'd say, yeah, I did. I did. I, I, pre I actually, I practiced it on a podcast intro too months ago. So that actually gives me even more reassurance. They say, well, I'm going to get to use this intro twice, uh, and maybe I'll prep my pillows more. But you deserve a good night's sleep, and I've been there tossing and turning. So I hope I can help. I mean, the only thing is, uh, clearly, this podcast doesn't work for everybody. I'm, I'm a bit different. So just see how it goes. See if it works for you. Uh, give it a few tries because I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. I really want to help you fall asleep. Uh, thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to keep this podcast uh, coming out twice a week. Thanks. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about AquaTrue. You got to get an AquaTrue in your kitchen for you and your family. And you know this as well as I do. We all need to drink water, you know, a lot of it to stay hydrated, to be healthy. Our bodies are made of 60% water. And I stopped drinking water out of the tap a long time ago. And that's a pretty universal thing. Virtually every household in America has harmful contaminants in their water. And AquaTrue is made by the same company that makes uh, the amazing air purifier, the Air Doctor. AquaTrue is a revolutionary new water purifier. It's certified to remove 15 times more contaminants than those water pitcher filters. We're talking about a high quality piece of technology, not just something you pour the water in the top and then it dribbles through. And you say, what is that? Is that just charcoal in there? Is there what? No, AquaTrue is a four stage countertop filter. It works with no installation, no plumbing. And here's another important thing the water tastes delicious i make my sun tea with aqua true i make my coffee i fill my dog's bowl and i give it to my daughter it's patented ultra reverse osmosis technology is certified to remove 80 of the most harmful contaminants that includes chlorine fluoride lead arsenic pfas nitrates and many more it's the same technology used by all the major bottled water brands the filters are affordable and they're long lasting and you, you know you don't want to have to think about this. You just want to... <laughs> When you're thirsty, you want to drink. You want to stay hydrated. You don't want to have to worry about, is, is, is you know, I got to go to the store to get more water. What about all the plastic? You could save the environment from tons of plastic waste. You could save money. AquaTrue costs less than three cents a bottle. I love my AquaTrue. So do thousands of satisfied customers. AquaTrue is the only water purifier that clean water activist Aaron Brockovich recommends. And AquaTrue comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And today, you got to get on this. You know, this is an offer. You got to take them up on it right away. Don't wait. My listeners can receive $100 off an AquaTrue plus free shipping. And you just go to AquaTrue.com. That's A-Q-U-A-T-R-U.com and use this code SLEEP at checkout. That's $100 off plus free shipping when you go to AquaTrue.com and use that promo code SLEEP. Get over there and then share with me a picture of you toasting me with that delicious aqua true water uh thanks everybody all right hey everybody it's a scooter here and tonight's episode will be a little bit uh, different I've, I've uh haven't done one of these episodes in a little while and this will be a different version of that episode at least in what i'm thinking ahead of time i'm wondering and this does take some setup, so, so like, uh, I'll try to explain this to, for new listeners, um, like, why, why this is important, uh, or why, why does this, uh, wh what's up with this? So, uh, this is an episode, a Carol King guided, where Carol King tries to help me, or... I don't know if ether is the right word. The spirit of Carol, the power of Carol King. And that's Carol with an E, not Caro, Ca Carol. Uh, the songstress, uh, the activist, uh, the, the wonderful uh, Carol King, the subject of a musical. 
uh, songwriter, uh, singer, and so much more. Also, uh, now this is presumptive uh, or only what I believe, but also uh, either her, her positivity and power is so powerful or she's a magic user or she has some sort of other... Um, uh, power it could be it could be science based power as we see like oh anything that uh, you know as we have trouble you know what I mean the the ex- explanation about science and magic. Also, I can say I guess I can say this, say this very concise. Well, I can't say anything concisely. I say it. Carol King has powers beyond my understanding that impact me in a positive way. So that's one thing. And you say, okay, Scoots, so can you repeat that just so we we have a baseline? So Carol King has powers beyond my understanding that have a positive impact on my life. When, well, when I remember uh, to use the powers that, that she presents me. And you say, okay, Scoots, explain it to me more. Or what is the power and, and how does it manifest? Oh, great question. Great word, by the way. How does it manifest and what is the power? So, uh, once upon a time before, I think mo- a lot of you were in existence, but not everybody you, like, so we have a, a smartphones, right? Uh, and we're on whatever the 10th or generation of smartphones. I don't know if that means we've had t- smartphones for 10 years. Uh, probably about that though. Cause I think, yeah, maybe, maybe 12 years. I have no idea. Mystery Bard would know that better than me. And at some point, we started consuming most of our streaming music on our smartphones. This is a music-based uh, thing. Before we had smartphones, we had music players. And those are uh, like uh, the generation of music players, obviously, this is pretty long. But the portability of music players is a little bit shorter, but still fa- fairly long uh, across my lifetime. Uh, but at some point, I don't know if it was in, I, th- I guess it was in the, was it in the aughts? I guess it probably was in the aughts. Uh, uh, there came a time where people said, oh, well, well, digital music was a thing. And then how do you consume digital music? For me, it was first, it was an MD mini disc player, which actually was really convenient. And it had unlimited memory as, as many, as much memory as you had mini discs. Uh, but there was also uh, digital drive, hard drive based music players, and the iPod was one of with the fir- kind of the biggest one. And it was a precursor to like the iPod Mini and the iPod Micro and the iPod, you know. And there was also other ones like Zoom and uh, I think uh, iRiver. I don't know. I guess yeah. The first one I saw was in two. It might have been in the two thousand. I remember me being in my uh, uh, now brother-in-law's uh, car before he was married to my sister, and he had one. It was about the size of a portable CD player at that time, so this was a few generations before I had one. Uh, but eventually I had a, uh, I guess an iPod, whatever you call that thing, yeah, an iPod. I, I don't know if it was the second or third or fourth generation. It had the touch wheel, not the click wheel. And, like, I started listening to music on that. And I had that for a while. And eventually I started listening to podcasts on that. Or maybe I already, maybe I was already listening to podcasts. But uh, uh, anyway, at some point, so one of the things about the iPod, uh, and, okay, one thing you need to know about me is, like, uh, once I realized you could put all this music on there, I said, well, what, like I would go over, if, especially if I was staying at someone's house for a weekend or something, they'd say, what music you got on your computer? Can I put it on my iPod? Or my siblings, I'd say, hey, what music do you have on your computer? Can I put it on my iPod? And they'd say, sure, sure, go ahead. And so eventually I like uh, had a lot of random stuff on my iPod, like just not my own music, but uh, music uh, that was owned by people I knew. And one of my favorite things to do was to just shuffle the music because then it would lead me on a journey of, it would just be fun. Now, sometimes you'd, you know, you'd get into that radio changing mode where you wouldn't accept what the music was. 
Uh, but if you could be, it was a very meditative thing almost to like to say, okay, let's just listen. I don't know what this song is, or I don't know who, whose song was this uh, out of all the people I got music from. It was a different time back then. It was, you know, it was the, like, it wasn't, it was the platter age, they called it. This was a platter hard drive, not a solid state hard drive even. Now, at some point, and and now some of this is a leap of belief systems for me, so some of this may be be, be easily disproved by facts uh, or interpretation of facts, but... This shuffle, I believe, had a learning algorithm that was a based. It was a very now. I don't want to use the term rudimentary because it probably wasn't rudimentary. But compared to now, it probably you'd say an algorithm today would say, "Well, that's a," and I'd say, "Well, that's not a very nice way to put it." You say, "Well, I don't mean it. You're interpreting rudimentary in a non-nice way. I mean it is a." a stage in the development of music-based shuffling algorithms based on preference. And I'd say, okay, that's a very interesting way to explain it. But uh, so whatever this algorithm was, that would say, oh, if you, it would, it would start to note what songs got played, like even when you, this was always watching because it was built into the device. This wasn't a, like a connected device. You had to plug it in to put music on it. But it was always keeping track of, like, what songs you listen to, even outside of shuffle. And for some reason, when you were shuffling, it would increase, the, like, whatever the random—it was only slightly random. Then it was like, well, you like these songs, so I'm going to play these more often. And then, of course, that became more and more true for the songs you played to come up during shuffle. And now, separately, at some point, I had a bunch of Carol King music on my iPad or on my iPod. And, uh, like, I enjoy Carol King music. While I wouldn't consider myself, I mean, before this, I wouldn't consider, like, now I have a totally, you know, near spiritual relationship with uh, a human being named Carol King. But, you know, the, these things get complicated. You know, I'm a human, I'm, I myself am a human being. But so, uh, at some point, like, uh, all I can say is that, uh, Somehow, and I, I use this term spiritually, or you could say magically, the power of Carol King permeated my iPod shuffle algorithm uh, in a way that we could only say is be, well that we can only say is beyond my understanding. Which even basic algorithms are beyond my understanding, but this is in a much more important way. And what that meant is that every few songs, not every few songs, I'd say within, if a hundred songs, like in a hundred songs, there was a hundred percent chance of one of those being a Carol King song. And it's probably less than that because they say, well, how long does it take to listen to a hundred songs? And this was, I was doing a lot of walking, a lot of driving over the periods I had this iPod. So I'd say, okay, like, uh. Uh, now here's how powerful that is. At some point, I had to recreate this iPod on it, like because its platters slowly, its ability to play music slowly faded away. Luckily, I had duplicated it, and this is still the power of this iPod still holds true in other forms. And I guess that it, isn't that a th- what Ethereal is or Ether. I don't know, but so uh, Carol King's power or the power I believe Carol King to have, uh, permeated this iPod. And then I started to actually take a step back and say, okay, why, this is interesting that these Carol, maybe it's every 50 songs, I don't know, like uh, once a week. So you say 10 songs, yeah, probably every 50 songs, a song would come up by her. And I never, I just said, well, that's like, uh, you know, at first I just had, a, I said, well, like, what's up with that? Now, I never, now you could say this is my own obliviousness, my own, uh, what do you call that when, like, uh, like caught up in my own thoughts. So those are things I'm good at. I never noticed it with any other, uh, music or group or artists. So that's also like you said, that may disprove any doubts that you have, but also may just prove that I'm not paying attention. I'm barely ever paying attention because I, you know, I'm thinking about the past, present and future. But so I, I, at some point though, I came to believe, well, what if Carol King, 
And I can remember the place I was where I was, like, I, I came to this conclusion. I was walking to my job uh, when I was a librarian. Uh, I had a couple of places, like a couple of like, uh, lo- youth locations or young adult locations. And, uh, and I remember walking. I would walk there from BART. It was a long walk, uh, but, it, like, I spent a lot of time listening to podcasts. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is when it happened. It could be like this is just when I was thinking about it. It, This is when I accepted the power of it. Um, And I realized that uh, what if uh, the the power of Carol King is uh, in my podcast at all times, not just when her songs are playing. And that meant that uh, at times in my life, when I needed an adventure or I need guidance, I've been able to turn to the shuffling powers uh, that live within my uh, now my digital replication, which may not function for much longer. That's another reason why I'm recording this episode. Is I'm wondering what will happen because I have to transition, and I say, well, is this going to be tra- like is this going to transition or not uh, to another platform? Because this platform is not going to exist much longer. And I only have this, uh, this version of it. I don't know that I, I may, may have it. So oh, actually, I think I do have it somewhere, but who knows? Those are also platter based hard drives. But so, uh, when I need an adventure or when I need guidance, it, it's particularly when the stakes are, you know, world level stakes or personal stakes, uh, and I remember, which is also like once every 18 months or something, I turned to Carol King for help. Uh, but, uh, this situation, I, I just thought of like in the intro, I said, okay, what if, uh, like, uh, like, what if we are looking what if I call up a, the mall or like, a, or office, a, you know, corporate office and say, Hey, what about, uh, this creaky dulcet collection? Cause they did try to do the creaky dulcet door collection and, uh, and then the Creaky Dulcet uh, Dior collection by Dior, and neither one of those. So let's try it. Uh, so here I am I'm with my advisor, the uh, algorithmic spiritual incarnation of the power of Carol King and I. And I'm, okay, I'm going to c- c- call up the old uh, imagination uh, phone. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, hi, this is Scooter. I'm, I'm calling. Uh, uh, for your boss, is she in? Okay. Uh, oh, Scooter who? Uh, the, the, well, not the Scooter. Uh, like, not the Scooter from Muppets. Uh, the, that's, and not a Scooter, like, that goes zoom, zoom, zoom. So not the Scooter from Muppets. Obviously, I don't, like, I don't, sound, I'm here to, uh, like, a, a, like, well, maybe you could help me. Is this one of the things where you're screening, but you're really, uh, Anyway, so let me, um, now I got maybe like, uh, do, could, like usually, oh, gatekeeper, that's what it's called. Like where you're a gatekeeper and then, but really you're, you're on the other side of the gate. Uh, like, did you, you know, Wizard of Oz, uh, do, well, I read the book actually, so I know this is the answer to this, but was the wizard, like was the wizard of, what if the Wizard of Oz was the gatekeeper, that thing that said, uh, hi. But I know I read the book, and that turns out not to be the case. I don't think. Also, in the movie, you know, in the book, they had to wear these emerald glasses everywhere. I don't know if they, they didn't have to do that in the movie, though. Kind of like rose-colored glasses. I don't know if that was a subtextual. I think it was a subtextual message. Or maybe it wasn't even, maybe only I. But so, oh, yeah, sorry, why am I calling? Great question. And yeah, uh, hopefully you're sitting down. So I was wondering, like, I was thinking about starting, like, I always have, I never actually, I never dreamed of this. I just thought it was a good idea the other day that maybe I could have, like, so does your mall, okay. So you're not a mall. Oh, I know you're a get, like, you're the person answering the phone, like to see if I'm like, I can cut the mustard or whatever. I don't know what that means either because, uh, 
does seem ridiculous, like a ridiculous phrase, cut the mustard. Is that even a phrase? Because they say, what in the heck? Uh, maybe it's like, but mustard seeds, but wouldn't you grind the mustard in that case? Like stone ground mustard, that's a thing. Like, I can't imagine anybody cutting the mustard. I mean, I've heard of the cutting the other stuff. Am I right? Sorry, that was... uh. Okay, so, well, here's the thing. Maybe with anyone you work with, uh, once upon a time, uh, they're like, I guess it, this is strange. Like, I would say, is a mall a representation of niches or is it mass market version? Like, it's not quite niche, uh, each store in a mall. Uh, but it is, uh, it is kind of right. Or it's a specific items, but this store that I'm thinking of, uh, and this probably only had it to like, I don't know what the run of these kind of stores was and if they're still even around, because i be honest, I haven't been doing my part. Uh, I mean, I have been doing my part staying home, you know, I don't, like that's why, why you're, an oh, you're answering from home. Of course. Like, but even before it was time to stay home. And, but like before that, I, I didn't like, uh, I would only, I, I'll be honest, like I'm trying to think of the last time. Oh no. I know when I went to a mall, uh, before it was time to stay home, I went to one after I dropped my brother off at the airport in Florida. When I was driving back to my parents, I went to a mall to try to record an episode for Patreon, but there was too much, um, uh, there was too much copyrighted music playing at the mall. So I said, oh, I can't record an episode because of the copyrighted music. So that was a bit of a bummer. Um, which, uh, yeah, so so I guess, yeah, that was a bit of a bummer, I guess is what I was saying. Um, oh, yeah, I was so, but I, and I did eat lunch there, but I didn't do any, I don't know if I did anything else. I guess I just left. I ate lunch, um, and I think, yeah, did I walk the whole mall? I don't even know if I walked the whole mall. I mean, so I, I'd be re, I'd be remiss if I wasn't honest with you that I'm not the best. Uh, oh, before that? Oh, boy. Yeah, that was probably in January or, or early February. Oh, somewhere in, in like, uh, I don't know, somewhere in near where my parents are. No, but not near, actually. Then I got lost. Then I tried to drive back to their house without the GPS uh, and just guess at what exit they were off of. Uh, and I actually guessed my way back there, but I got off the wrong exit. Uh, I think I talked about that in another podcast. I said, I'll just find the way. It'll be okay. Anyway, oh, yeah, what was my point? Oh, so, oh, when was the other time? I don't know when I went before that. But I remember a time when the mall had like a memory store, which really wasn't a memory. Well, there's like always one or two card stores, right? Or a gift shop. Like a, it wasn't a gift shop. Uh, I mean, sometimes there was the card store run by one of the card companies, or maybe they both had their own stores. And they also sold, they probably said, well, cards are only four bucks. Uh, I don't know if the cards were in the supermarkets at this time. I would presume they were. We said, well, you can't, you can't, obviously if you're running the mall, you say, well, you can't pay, like you got to sell more than cards because you're not going to sell that many cards. So then like they started selling stuff like wind chimes with ceramic owls on them, uh, candles, book, probably bookends. I don't know where else you'd buy like a bookend. Um, and then collectibles type stuff, right? Tre tre treasures, as some people would call them. Uh, I think there was probably, maybe, I w was there ever a Hummel figurine store only at the mall? Or was it, is this just my mem imagination? But like ceramic based items, like, um, and then, yeah, paper pro Well, there was usually like a paper store too. This is in the 90s, I'm thinking. Oh, why do I bring that up? Well, so I was thinking if there were, it was a store like that, that wasn't like it run like in by, they say, well, this is our company. We only sell our company's products. Uh, or, well, maybe I could work with them. I was thinking about coming up with a creaky dulcet collection, 
like the Creaky Dulcet collection or Creaky Dulcet treasures or Creaky Dulcet memories. Well, what's the Creaky Dulcet? Well, I could tell you about the Creaky Dulcet collection and maybe that would help. Like, okay. So the store, like, uh, so Creaky Dulcet memories. Um, the first one, I'm here also, I just want to fully disclose, I'm here with a spiritual-based algorithm that I, I believe is a spiritual-based algorithm or an algorithm beyond my understanding uh, based on the music of Carol King, maybe influenced by her in a way that's beyond my understanding. Okay, good, you're still listening. Great. Uh, so the first thing I have to pitch is uh, called Pretty Paper. And you see, pretty paper, what does pretty paper mean to everyone? Well, something different to everyone, but to me and to the Creaky Dulcet collection, it would be paper that is thick, paper that has a texture to it. You know, like a paper that kind of feels like it's made of uh, not quite papyrus, though one, that would be another thing. We could have papyrus. Oh, that was one of the stores that was called that. The paper store was called papyrus. Did they? Here's a serious question. Do they sell actual papyrus at papyrus? Because if they don't, even if they do, I think people would want to buy papyrus. Uh, also, papyrus, I like saying that. I didn't realize it was, uh, is it two Ps like that? Papyrus, right? If you have a stack of papyrus paper, is it papyri? Like you say, well, here's a, you say, well, that's more than one papyrus. Is it a papyri? You don't know. Well, that's like, so that would be the first item in the Creaky Dills collection is pretty paper. And I'm not saying that it's papyrus, but me, and, or if it's recycled. But you know that paper, it's got that feel. It, it looks like it even has strings or something in there. It's not perfect, and each piece has its own personality. And it is one of those papers that, like, drinks ink. You say, what is this, how does this paper do with ink? I say, oh, it drinks it up. Do, do you have, a, like, you better have, like, a juicy pen ready to go. Uh, because when that, and, and if you, oh boy, like sometimes you just want to touch the pen to this paper to watch it and watch the ink spread out. And you can even see it like forming like a crystalline entity on the paper. And you'd say to your pen, oh boy, does she want to move? And that would be the name of our pen collection. Uh, the Creaky Dulcet Pen Collection. And we'd say that because uh, for left, like a couple of reasons with our pen. It, well, let me go with, uh, oh, the more fluid thoughts of the fluid pen moving. Oh, this pen, it, it like, it's, it could work with any paper. But when it hits that, uh, when it hits that pretty paper, it really, like, uh, it wants to move. Because obviously you want to keep it moving because otherwise it'll keep it. Like, you'll get a hole in the paper because it'll drink too much ink up. Uh, uh, but maybe, like, ours is, you say, is it cardstock? Not quite. It's good for folding. It's threefold for a letter, but only a one- or two-page letter. Though we have pretty paper thin, which is a thinner paper, kind of like those papers you see people get in the journals of. You say, oh, this is like paper-thin paper. And you say, you're kidding me, right? And you say, well... I don't know how else to describe. Our other paper was like paper, but not is paper thin technically. But oh boy, this is like nearly translucent, pretty paper. We call it pretty paper thin. That if you're gonna write longer letters, you you want to use that because you can put more in one envelope at you know the regular stamp rate. But this pen we sell as part of the Creaky Dulcet collection. She wants to move. Uh, uh, because, like, uh, you want to, because that's what pens are made to do. Just like Chris would say, that's what, like, I was born to do, to warm it up. This pen was born to move. Another reason it was born to move is because we want it, we actually designed it to stop uh, leaking out ink because of, for left handers, one. Also, do, could we get a team? Do you have any a team of scientists, like, in the basement of, of the mall or anything? 
Like, I know, like, this is like a fantasy thinking about Leftorium and Ned Flanders and all that, but uh, I was just thinking that, uh, like, just to solve the whole ink and, and pencil thing for left-handers, that never has gotten figured out, really. I mean, there's been attempts, but there's never been something that every, they say, you got to try this. This is it. Your problems are solved, especially when it comes to pencils or erasable ink or wet ink. Uh, now, this one, we do have it because the pen has to move and especially the pretty paper drinks it up uh, and holds it. The, like, uh, that's another part of the design of the pretty paper I didn't mention. Oh, you want to stop me? Okay, uh, what was your, oh, what does either one of those have to do with Creaky Dulcet? Uh, I don't know, uh, actually, because Carol King's been, uh, uh, get telling, like, uh, let me ask, it, oh, Louise, oh, Louise, uh, that's right, uh, holy Bonnie Raitt, Louise, um, uh, is, uh, like, the, 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 uh, why is it creaky dulcet, the pretty paper or the pen that wants to move? Oh yeah, let me bring in Louise. She's our like she's our brand she's our brand ambassador. Well, hello, this is Louise from uh, the Creaky Dulcet collection. Uh, also previously known of uh, Creaky Dulcet Doors by Dior and the Creaky Dulcet Creaky Dulcet Dior uh, by Christina Dior. Uh, what can I help you with? Uh, are you, oh, you're the gatekeeper. Hello, hello, hello. Well, we're really excited to tell you about the Creaky Dulcet Collection, where our brand, one of our brand, uh, hall, well, I can't say that. I almost accidentally punned myself saying a hallmark of our brand. And Scooter already said p p papyrus. Oh, golly gee. Next thing you know, I'll be down at Walden Pond with a Walden book, you know, just enjoying it. Uh, and did you know this is no, Scooter never wanted to. He once he found out there was a bookstore called Brenatano's or something once upon a time. And they offered free gift wrapping at their store. So Scooter bought every present as long as that store existed uh, at that store. And that saved him from having to wrap any gifts, which he's not super skilled at. Um, which is what I want to tell you about is the the paper I've designed uh, for wrapping gifts. It's called uh, Louis, Louis, Louis. Uh No, I'm just kidding. I, I was just... So what is the Creaky Dulcet Collection and why would you be interested in it? That's what you may be saying to us and our team here. And I think now this may be another store name of Treasured Moments. This is like a treasured moment in reality. Now, Scooter didn't do a good job of explaining it, so I try will try to. And he opened it with a creaky dulcet floor. So as a gatekeeper, I want you to close your eyes and think of the cre like a, a, your favorite creaky dulcet floor moment. Um, but I'll describe two for you. One is a uh, is, is a mother, uh, and it's uh, late in the evening, and she's just uh, she, she, she's uh, she 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 lives there by herself. Uh, her loved her little ones have gone on to start their lives, and it's evening, and she's just finishing her tea and and cleaning out her teacup in the kitchen sink when she remembers she hasn't checked the mail yet today. And she, uh, you know, finishes washing her tea, dries her hands, you know, before checking the mail completely, turns down the kitchen lights, uh, and steps out of the kitchen, and she uh, has a door with the mail slot uh, and heads to the door. She was so caught up in the day, uh, she didn't check the mail till this evening. And she sees some mail on the floor. She sees something that looks like a letter, a handwritten letter there among the uh, stack of uh, 
whatever those are called with the little windows, uh, cellophane window, mail, and J-U-N-K mail. And she reaches down and she picks up those things and, and her heart kind of leaps a little bit with joy and anticipation. But there's two cellophane-based envelopes first and she puts those to the side and then she turns as she's... Uh, moving these business-based correspondence uh, to the back of the pile, and her foot steps down, and the floor creaks. Uh, the floor creaks at the exact moment her thumb touches uh, from our pretty paper collection, a pretty paper envelope collection, and her thumb is on that, uh, and uh, oh boy, is uh, she can feel the, the 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 craftsmanship and love that went into the pretty paper, but more she knows that handwriting. Oh, that handwriting is from her daughter. No, does that she can see the love in the lines that says "Mom." Address, uh, dot, 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 address, uh, town, state, and country, province, or region. And uh, then on the top left, uh, she sees uh, that uh, there's a uh, thumbprint, uh, made a thumbprint of lipstick, which she finds interesting, and then either on top of the thumbprint or behind it, she can't tell, is a uh, loving daughter, address, uh, province, uh, town, state, country, wherever. And she smiles because at the exact same time she's processing things in the present, she's remembering Sitting there with tea when her daughter would try to come in. When she was in college, you know, she'd been out late with her friends, uh, visiting with them, or she was home at the holidays in her 20s, uh, catching up with friends, and uh, that one part of the door could always squeak. She could hear it even in her sleep uh, from back from high school. But now it wasn't so much a confirmation that your kid was out past because it, your your kid was an adult now. It was that they were home under your roof uh, with you for a special time that you got to share with them again. And then on top of that, she gets to enjoy the heartfelt letter uh, sent from her daughter. And that is uh, the essence of the creaky. Do you understand now the, what's creaky about uh, the, the creaky dulcet collection? Okay, well, um, yeah, so, oh, you want me to go on? Okay, well, I'm going to put some sugar on this next one. Is, uh, you, you'd rather talk to me than Scooter? Well, okay, then. Well, this next one, you don't, this one is called, uh, this because this is another thing we've thought about, is that, uh, from our memories, uh, as we've we've we haven't we've only done memory based and feeling based research uh, and assumption based research. Two out of three of those are uh, effective, and then the third one, you know, ma makes a rear out of all of us. Uh, but uh, one thing Scooter said to us is that uh, snow globes. Uh, he said it just like people say it in the movies, and, and you lets it sit there, snow globes, but. Because we were all there in our minds. He said, think about a creaky, dulcet snow globe. And this was one of our brainstorming sessions. This is how it goes, working within it. You know, it's, uh, so we all said, what is a creaky, dulcet snow globe? Uh, what would that be? And then uh, we, we all, like, uh, we had a long time just to sit. And we're not allowed to write or anything and just process it and, uh, like, uh, it takes some getting used to. Um, 
And then we do some elaboration, open question time. And someone said, well, do, do snow globes have to be, how related are they to the holiday season? And uh, Scooter said, I, I don't know. I'd say 60% related. But, I, you know, factually or market-wise, I got no idea. Maybe 70 or 80% in a regular store. But w- what if we go 60%? And everyone nodded knowing they barely understood, you, you know, Scooter is, uh, but also would try to. And then we slowly reach the idea of, well, what would it, would a creaky dulcet, uh, there's a lot of things you could do. But what, and then we thought about, well, what if a snow, like, what would a non holiday snow globe be like, uh, that was appealing? And we thought about, well, what else is a globe? And we thought about fortune tellers, uh, and, you know, putting sugar on a fort, like, uh, so you say, wait a second, uh, uh, like, so this is snow globe. And then we said, well, some fortune tellers, uh, uh, of any, uh, any kind would use creaky, like creaky dulcet tones and fortune telling. They're not a hundred percent intertwined, but they are. And uh, we said, okay, so the, there's a fortune teller within the snow globe, uh, but the snow globe is also a thing. And then we said, okay, and then someone said, you know, I think there's like a simple thing, because you always turn the snow globe over and shake it, uh, and then you turn it back over, and we we knew there was like a simple sound effect that would make a, a creaky dulcet sound, like a, like a creaky dulcet sigh. It's a very simple non-electronic uh, device, uh, a sound effect device. You've seen it in children's toys or anything. It just sounds like a, a breathing in creaky dulcet sigh. And uh, pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, we said, okay, yeah, that would be the creaky dulcet. And that would be soothing. And it would actually give an extra thing. It would dr- also, within the store, it would bring attention and we said, okay, well, the snow, you know, should we use glitter? Should we use some sort of soapy cosmic water? And then they said, okay, well, and then Scooter said, what about, um, uh, what about this? Uh, what about, there's also very similar to a snow globe, also very similar to a fortune teller is the magic eight ball. And Scooter said, wow, the, the, you know, the, 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 the team is working on the prototypes. What if either on the fortune tellers, like in the table or in the globe or in something else is also a magic eight ball built in? Maybe just the table, maybe the table within the snow globe that the fortune tellers are looking down on. Is a magic ape like is like the the window of a magic eight ball? And we said, oh, like, uh, holy cow! And this is when I say, oh boy, this is why I work here, because uh, you say, okay, so we're gonna take a snow globe, we're gonna put a sound effect in it, not Scooter's idea, but our team's idea, that has like a somewhat comforting but somewhat uh, different sound. And then we're going to have a fortune teller, but then we're also going to have a made magic eight ball feature in there. And then we're going to have an effect, whether it's a snow, glitter, or swirls, uh, or something else. And then, of course, like everybody on the team at the same time raised their hands and Scooter said, maybe, he said, yes, I know what you're thinking because we all are a part of a team. Maybe we can do another uh, snow globe that's a Tesla coil or one of those plasma globes, uh, but not this one. That might be too much. Uh, and also maybe do a plasma globe that also has a uh, magic eight ball. So we agreed on that. So that's another thing you would find at the Creaky Dulcet collection 
Oh, you want me to do the marketing thing for the fortune teller snow globe? Okay, well, there you are, is that mother. And uh, there you are. Uh, maybe like, uh, you're, maybe you're, you're a different, uh, parent. Uh, yeah, you're just a parent. Uh, you're in a different spot. Um, and maybe, uh, you're, you're in a, like a smaller apartment that you've moved to. You've downsized, uh, but again, you're thinking, and it's your, this, this holiday, you said, well, I'm going to stay put this holiday, just me. And you know, I'll use the devices to contact everybody I care about and love. Uh, but this one, I'm just doing it for me. I'm taking it. It's going to be low. It's going to be chill. I've decided this year that I'm going to celebrate it for myself and in my own way. And I'm choosing to do this. Yeah, maybe there's a part of me that'll feel a little frowny. But most of me wants to do this for a break and to have some time to myself uh, to reflect on what this year meant to me and what everyone in this year meant to me. And it, it just happened to correspond with, oh, well, you're going there, you're going on a vacation, and that doesn't appeal to me. Or, oh, you're going to spend time with your uh, your other parts, your extended family. I understand, and I'm not saying this in a passive way. I actively understand, and that is fine. And so there you are, uh, like uh, getting ready. You, you got uh, the fireplace effects on the TV. You've got some warm nog and cocoa mixed together, nutmeg on the surface, and you're just relaxing there. And then you hear the creaky door of your cat door that goes out back uh, to where out in the, on your patio where the litter box is. Uh, and you smile because uh, Snuffles is coming in and you hear the bell you put around Snuffles' collar jingling, jangling. And then Snuffles goes under the tree and uh, paws at the gift that you got for Snuffles. Uh, like, hey, when are we going to be able to open it? And you see that it's a rounded gift, uh, and it's a, you know, it's a toy for Snuffles to play with. One of those balls that, uh, this one, you know, has a random, like, uh, this has a randomizing algorithm built in it, uh, to be fun for the cat to play with Snuffles. Uh, but next to it is also a rounded, it has a base, but it's a rounded gift too. And you think, uh, think about it and they say, okay, let's, so you open that and I'll open this Snuffles, uh, and, uh, Snuffles, uh, you, you say, okay, I'll open it for you. And then at first the Snuffles is so enamored with the paper that Snuffles has a battle with the paper and chases the paper around and then you go to open your gift, and at the same time, Snuffles uh, decides, well, I'm so excited, i got to go out and visit the litter box again. And, and the creaky, dulcet cat door swings. And your heart fills with the memories of the uh, time you spent uh, with Snuffles and, and some of your children. And, uh, that, uh, you say, wait a second, we, our creaky, uh, we're, we're, that other place we lived had a creaky dulcet cat door. And we used to always laugh, uh, when we say, oh, there goes Snuffles, at least Snuffles knows when Snuffles gets so excited that Snuffles has to use the uh, litter box. Uh, and we all, and I, you can remember a holiday a moment just like this one, but different. That felt special, but this one feels special in a different way. And then you go to lift up that gift, and you feel it has some weight to it because it's, a, you know, a snow globe. Uh, and you see the card on it. It says, Missing You. 
and thinking of you and wondering when we'll see you in the future. Do you know, question mark? Uh, and you say, wait a second, is that some sort of related to the gift? And you rip open the thing. Also, you notice that because your children are pretty witty, also taped to the bottom of the fortune teller snow globe eight ball thing is a uh, like sound effect thing is a uh, like a, a, a invitation uh, to a future event with your family that's optional but that you could take them up on it you know six months from now and then you turn it over again and it makes that sound, and Snuffles comes in with a look of, uh, and then Snuffles starts playing with Snuffles' ball. And you look at the uh, beautiful effects we added uh, to make the snow globe so much more. But you have, what's ironic is that you're looking at a snow globe not definitely designed for the holidays. And you're remembering that, it, uh, strangely enough, uh, that year. You'd given everyone different types of, uh, g like, these were magic eight balls with goofs, uh, uh, like they, like uh, parody magic eight balls made for children, uh, like, of the rebellious teen age, uh, saying, you know, better watch your step, uh, eat your vegetables. Uh, so a tear forms in your eye, a tear of uh, joy and love, and it rolls down your cheek. And this is before you even realize as you start to shake uh, the globe and it gets misty and feels magical and it kind of makes that creaky dulcet sound effect, but less because it's not totally, it just makes a little creak uh, that, uh, that it, in the, the table of the fortune teller is a magic eight ball. It was thingamajig, uh, and it comes up on there, and it says, you are loved. Uh, remember that. And you, and, and then you uh, put it down, and you shut off the TV, and you start to get ready for bed, and eventually you snuggle in your bed so comfortable, uh, with visions of just these creaky dull, just these uh, few items of the creaky dulcet collection uh, dancing in your head. Uh, oh, hello. so what did you think of the pitch? Oh, you're asleep. Okay, well that's good. Uh, that means that the creaky dulcet collection is still in development as you get comfortable and start to drift away, and there's plenty more if you need it. The Creaky Dulcet Collection is always here on demand, too. And you could also think of your own Creaky Dulcet moments, uh, or make up and imagine your own. With the power uh, that I perceive to be broadcast by Carol King, the possibilities are endless. Good night. All right, I want to thank everybody for supporting the show on Patreon. Uh, recently, uh, Janessa, Elon, and Diana, thanks, 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 and good night. Eleanor, Kate, and Terry, thanks, 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 and good night. Bo, Esther, and Dom, thanks, 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 and good night. Samantha, Allison, and Reagan, thanks, 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 and good night. Lori, Samantha, and David, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Cassie, Isabel, and Callie, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Sarah, Elizabeth, and Kate, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. A, John, and Nicholas, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, David, Dion, and uh, Aaron, thanks, 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 and good night. Chris, Melanie, and Isaac, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. James, Chantel, and Ariel, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Heather, Amanda, and Jennifer, thank you, thanks, 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 good night. Allison, Cameron, and Chelsea, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Matthew, Serenity, and Debbie, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. 
uh, Mike, Michael, and Joyce, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Chris and Crystal, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thanks, everybody, for supporting the show on Patreon. Uh, Sleep with Me is able to be here twice a week for free because of people that support the show on Patreon, people that support the sponsors. I appreciate that. You can also help the podcast by for, for free by just uh, spreading the word and letting people know about it. Uh, I really appreciate that because that helps uh, keep the show going. And here's uh, something I want you to know about. Thanks.